dear dr madhuri i bring all the best wishes and greetings from speed faculties and speed institute to you uh, for an wonderful achievement and performance the neat ss 2020 in your specialty of your choice of mch surgical oncology of rank number 39 the splendid and a wonderful performance thank you so much it i like the institute helped me up so much in this both the oncology and the general i did attend all your classes every day they were all very useful basics and the concepts were very good so you are talking about the daily based classes we have been taking three four months yes, for the exam. every day we had those classes from 8:30 so yeah. yes and that, that was a that was a great opportunity for me uh, to interact with all of you because uh, your answers were amazing and uh, it was very clear even from that day itself that uh, this exam is going to be a great uh, kind of a results performing exam you are all very good actually so what my opinion that day and today also and uh, uh, dr madhuri can we know something about you I mean from the days of uh, journey of your from medicine of mbbs to your post graduation now yeah. surgical uh, oncology why uh, it was surgical oncology what are the reasons behind i actually forgot why it by the start of surgical oncology came in my mind sir it was very long back that i thought of surgical oncology but in between i was uh, fluctuating for other branches but later i i couldn't do anything other than this it was like that i was very passionate about the surgical oncology so finally i ended up getting it okay where did you do your medicine uh it is an ashram sir it's in elur andhra pradesh and uh, my post graduation is also here from pinamni in siddhartha it's in vijayawada both in andhra pradesh so now uh, when did you start your preparation how did you start uh, i mean uh, when was your decision to go for uh, mch preparation how all this happened the decision was long back sir but uh, properly sitting and preparing for the started from february sir last year february it okay. started uh so from then i started reading devita and uh, general surgery both simultaneously one after the other i read it i made some notes for myself and uh, i attended the classes sir. so i had some concept from them so slowly and there was lot of time in between uh, due to the covid and all so it i kept revising everything back and forth from the beginning so that's how it went on <laughs> so it's it's really great really, really great and uh, and i also want to ask you I mean how many hours would have approximately spent for this preparation total uh, uh, in is it was it a full time or kind of 2 to 3 hours per day how it was and no so i was working before up to january then i stopped uh, i stopped okay. going and i sat i sit and read uh, for 10 to 12 hours per day approximately so it's a full time it's a full time uh, last uh, most six yeah, seven I months thought, uh, i thought i shouldn't take any more chances this time sir i thought it should i mean this time or uh, it's it's not going to be for the delay for this thing so i wanted this very badly so i sat and read all this time it's one go i mean we do this uh, one go and so that we are into the next phase of life i mean that's how, that's how it is and uh, you have done it perfectly yes. and uh, uh, can you uh, tell us what are the options now where are you looking at your uh, mch uh, surgical onco courses you would have done a complete research on this by this time yes sir. i was uh, first option i was thinking of tata sir but uh, since 24 seats and i don't think uh, i am not very sure about it so the second options are almost down south sir so um, particularly kidwa and adyar were my choices for the second option then in the order it would be rcc and uh, uh, pj and ir i'm thinking i think all the other when uh, second third and fourth options also are great institutes and yes, uh, i mean uh, you will uh, uh, definitely not fall short of uh, what is the requirement for your role. so that's i am very sure about kidwai also about uh, i mean adair also and also us in all these options uh, mid to next to tata and next to all that 
different lines. So there is uh, no worry of which option I'm going to get. They were all at equal place. So I'm not worried about any uh, any option right now. I'm happy so, to go. Uh, it is <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a happy moment. It's a happy uh, in all aspects. In you know, any of this institute is also fine. As you said, all are almost the same. It does not make any huge difference. And um, so what do you want to uh, tell uh, your juniors who want to prepare for MCH oncology when they should start, how they should read? I mean, what are your uh, experiences? And so that that could uh, give a, can give some tips to them so that they could do, do according. So for me, uh, what I realized was uh, it is to maintain consistency. So, you know, uh, we feel so many things in between all these uh, days of preparation. But still we need to stick on. Because uh, at last when we got this ENT author and all the thing, I was totally, I mean, like I didn't know where to start all those things. So whatever you study, you need to revise it and you need to be consistent. That is what I learned from all these days that is thing and keep on revising in whichever way it could be like listening to the classes or doing bits or revising what you have uh, read in the textbook again so you should keep on revising because it's so volatile that the next time you see that same book you are not going to remember anything it's like again it's like starting from the first line again after keeping on reading everything you feel like again what it started from the beginning so you need to revise back and forth all the times that is me and it that revision can i did it in a, any way like i would read whatever i have written or from the textbook or i would listen to the classes again so that it would be a revision it it was same like what i was reading and then repeatedly i would do, every day i would make a point to do bits so that is that gives you some confidence and concept both whichever things you are missing, uh, you can learn from bits because uh, they are uh, like I have done bits all from speed and all. So that would be a part of revision for me. So like what, whichever I forgot, like the key points or key things and uh, ruling out the options were very difficult even in the exam. So like in those four options, you will always find it difficult to rule out one. So... <laughs> That, that that is what I would try to do in bits so like four options I would try to learn what are those four options so that uh, I those four options will make another uh, questions so I would mostly concentrate on bits and uh, to read whatever I have written and all now you tell me during the exam of 100 questions uh, you felt this 40 is your strength or 60 is your strength 40 general surgery was your strength or a 60 surgical onco was your strength? So while preparing only, I kept telling myself that 20% uh, of my uh, question paper will be difficult for me because uh, because of ENT, ortho and uh, gyne. The last one month, uh, it was, uh, I couldn't read all the textbooks of ENT or uh, ortho or gyne. So I thought, Whichever I read from general surgery or onco, I should be perfect for all the 80%. Rest of the 20%, I'll, I'll see how much I can do. So, whichever I read from for onco or general surgery, I made sure I revised and I'm perfect in those all the things. So, how many questions were from ortho? How many questions were from gynec? And how many questions were from ENT? Uh, approximately. Uh, overall, it could be 20 from all the three, this, uh, three subjects. All the three, ENT, gynec, and... 20. From, only in general surgery, sir. They were not in um, 60 of oncology. They are all in general surgery. So, the general surgery paper of surgical oncology was different from other specialties. Am I right? Yes, yeah, it is different. It is not uh, what uh, uh, gastro or urology people write. It is another 40 questions exclusively for only oncology department, on oncology, with the feeder branches of ENT, ortho, and gynec. Uh, was it not uh, uh, difficult to handle this last minute of the exam? This was happening actually. And, uh, I, can't even the paper of I can't even say that stress I have gone through that when the notification was given and you were also discussing uh, while you were telling Bailey classes that this came up 
but i thought like last one month if i keep on reading some new things i thought i would waste my already prepared things i lose my strength if i work on my negative things so i thought uh, let me forget uh, those things i read what i read whatever it's in daily sir for or to kinetic and um, ent also whichever it is there but i didn't expect uh, the paper in that way <laughs> this 20 questions the 40 questions of uh, the general or the feeder branch this 20 questions of the three specialities of ent ortho and gynec the other 20 questions were only from bailey and love that uh, we have discussed or we, we have read yes, sir it is all uh, uh, the basics again all general surgery questions are easily answerable if we read it properly like entire general surgery and it's not like uh, the gastro paper also like uh, it was uh, purely like uh, it was not uh, purely like you don't get trauma you don't i have written gastro paper also sir. so there was okay. a there was a systematic uh, paper for gastro 40 marks of bailey where you can get uh, a few questions from trauma few questions from breast and thyroid few questions from head and neck but the general surgery topic here in oncology was a uh, way different like you are not you are not able to short shortly put it but it it ends up coming in whatever you read like it's purely from bailey or the sabiston if you can okay now this 20 questions of this gynec and ent and ortho were there basic questions or high end questions no, i'm sorry sir. to ask this again, again because the surgical onco people <laughs> now they want to prepare in this way so just i want to and also want to formulate this course also this year i want to put those videos of gynec ent and uh, um, ortho should we uh, give uh, high end or the I mean uh, basic you need to tell us on that i'm extremely sorry for that no sir no it's not, i know sir this is really very important now because that is about 50 to 20% and uh, we can't take choice on 50 to 20% of questions you can't keep on guessing those questions so i know it is important so it, it doesn't mind sir actually uh, the ent gynec and ortho were on the standards of pg that ms ortho ms gynec and ms ent they were on that on, on that uh, standards they were not like easy what we will be reading in um, like mbbs third year or finally it's not like that they were in the standard of post graduation the exit pg pg exit yes. level Yes, sir. It is in the exit level, and uh, if we really want to answer those questions, you need to be as much prepared as you read for general surgery. Okay. It is definitely not easy, and it needs it needs attention definitely. So if the paper uh, for the next year is going to be in the same feeder branches, these three subjects are uh, sure shortly. You need to prepare everything like general surgery, sir. I. why is this i don't understand why is this punishment uh, for uh, people who are aspiring for surgical onco i mean i really feel this like a punishment for other people also even for uh, gynec people ent and also ortho people should read general surgery again it's like doing a uh, four specialty uh, uh, feeder branch together at the exit level uh, yes sir yeah. for surgical oncology the preparation is so wide sir it's not like just you can narrow down uh, your preparation to one or two books or one or two things it's so wide from the specialty itself is wide you need to touch every part of it and everything is given equal weightage they, they don't miss even a single topic like even if the 60 questions of uh, onco they don't just put it put a spot on gi or uro or they distribute them equally in every way so you need to be perfect in everything from the anatomy till the recent guidelines or recent drugs and everything and even the radio radiation oncology so everything makes a point this 20 questions of ent ortho and gynec did they had a flavor of <laughs> oncology or it was general uh, aspects of uh, those things it has no flavor of oncology sir no general 40 questions they they didn't have any flavor of oncology and the general ent and ortho were purely like it was they have given some name of the classification system for ortho sir couldn't uh, they gave a system name
This classification belongs to which system they have asked? Like, uh, is it for hip replacement or it's for knee replacement or uh, it is something like that? It was, the question uh, was given like that. So there is no chance for us to know su such kind of questions. So it's not like that. I'm, I'm very sorry about it. I am very sorry to hear about it. Uh, but uh, the, then the gynecs, uh, they have given a picture in cephalic presentation of a baby mm -hmm. in the pelvis. And they asked us, uh, what is the position of vacuum, position of the vacuum where you place the vacuum suction over the head. So they have given it three centimeters from the for options were three centimeters from anterior fontanelle, six centimeters from anterior fontanelle, three centimeters in front of posterior or six centimeters behind the posterior fontanelle. That was a question from Gynec. You remember perfectly of this question, huh? perfect with numbers. I was I was shocked by seeing the question, sir. I don't even remember I have read it in MBBS uh, such type of questions when I was preparing or when I was reading for my final exam. But after see, uh, and two of the questions from Gynec were like this only, so they are picture based. They have given the picture. Mm -hmm. So that was like uh, now uh, I thought like uh, good that I didn't concentrate so much on Gynec. Even if I read uh, read so much, I am definitely not sure I'm going to remember this question for sure. I thought it was like all this uh, ENT was ENT was very tough sir, to be true. I couldn't even remember the questions. There were seven eight of questions and they were purely very very tough sir. I don't think I remember reading them anywhere in uh, final year or third year. They were so difficult. I mean, we need to read those books. I understand. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to grasp uh, all that. Yes, <laughs> your experience in it. After the exam, after seeing that paper, I was like, "Come on, it's gone." I really felt it's gone, sir, because that twenty percent. I was prepared. I am not going to answer, but still, it made a point there, sir. It was very disturbing after writing. But the 60 and 20 were good. That were mm -hmm. answerable. From whatever I prepared, I could answer every part of it. I was uh, able to know everything because they were all concept based and they were all, they were not one liners. So like previously, when I have seen the previous papers, they were, they ended up to be one liners. Like you have a one liner question and it was like that. But this time it's not one liners. The exam was not one. The sixty percent of onco was not one liners. It was more of concepts and uh, basics. Did you have picture based questions in the sixty? Image based, uh, image based questions of uh, uh, clinical. Okay, no. okay. It more, more of the picture based are in general. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, I've been bothering you through this uh, process of this uh, question paper because uh, I want to hear uh, through you, I mean, uh, what all the details. Uh, so, uh, but end of uh, but end of the day, uh, it's so good. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, I mean, what you intend to achieve, that is, uh, that is there, that, that is more important. Now, uh, once again, uh, I wish you uh, all the very best and all the success uh, in the career of uh, oncology. And keep in touch. And uh, you are, uh, as a resource person, I will definitely uh, bother you after after your admission uh, to sure. know some more details. So, kindly help in those situations. Sure, and sure, sure. Uh, I will you and your family, your friends, all of them. Huh? Oh, uh, you. All the success and uh, best wishes to you. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Okay. Sir.